Welcome to everybody. Uh, I'm Rinus Olofs. Uh, I'm a sculptor from the Netherlands. My intention is always uh, fascination. Uh, when I think about sculptures, uh, I come across things uh, that, that fascinate me very much, and then I go on uh, trying to make a sculpture out of it. M.G. Escher, uh, a famous Dutch artist, uh, is a great inspirer uh, for, for my work. There's another uh, famous artist uh, that is very inspiring for me, and that's Leonardo da Vinci. I was working in the field of mathematics and art. The computer is a, a very important tool for me. There uh, exist also uh, printing machines uh, which give you three-dimensional things. And for me that's a wonderful technique because uh, from now on I can make anything I can imagine. This is just the pattern. In this picture you see uh, exactly the same pattern, but again the small squares and the rectangles. So both pictures are based on exactly the same scheme, but now Instead of tiles, we've got a, a dome-like construction. I found out that you can make domes uh, like this, but uh, later on I, I found that uh, uh, there was an other artist uh, who also found this pattern, and that was Leonardo da Vinci. The drawing you see here is made by Leonardo da Vinci, and uh, he used the same scheme as I did for my domes. Uh, in a Leonardo grid, you can find elements like this, uh, so straight lines, and each line is connected uh, to exactly four other lines. So at the end, here, and there, and there, and there. So four connecting points. That's basically uh, what's happening in a Leonardo grid. And when you do that, you can make constructions like this. So starting with a square built up with four sticks. So this is just a, a starting of a dome. Uh, adding more sticks like this, you see that the middle square is now raising is coming from the ground and going on like this you can build uh, domes in a very simple way using the Leonardo grid as a structure. There are many, many ways to uh, put lines together in, in uh, the structure of a Leonardo grid uh, so also with hexagons uh, here each line is again connected with four other lines the midpoints are connected to endpoints of other lines and also this can be used to make uh, constructions. Uh, here I superimposed the blue grid uh, with triangles, and when I do this, I can use the, the triangles to build an uh, octahedron, like this. And now I've got the pattern of the Leonardo grid on a spherical uh, s structure. With this, well, uh, basic design, uh, I can make a sculpture, and the sculpture looks like this. It's made of 24 equal elements, and they are just fitting together without glue or, or anything. This is a, a very interesting tiling. Uh, well, the hexagons are divided in three equal parts, and uh, in each part you see a hole. It works like this. So with 12 identical parts, you can, by just sliding them together, uh, make a nice construction like this. So the, the total shape is a uh, cube octahedron. So once it's slid together, there's no way to take it apart again. This is the, the shape I use for this, the sculpture downstairs. You need five to make the plane. You can slide them together like this. And you need, uh, well, 25 more. And when you have that, you can make this final sculpture. And the connection to Azure uh, is, of course, this one. Here you see star-shaped elements, so flat elements that can also go together like this. So I think this is a better view uh, on the construction. Uh, and also for this one, uh, you can uh, uh, disassemble it uh, by rotating each element and uh, putting it, uh, pulling it away from the center. Uh, for this element, uh, I did some other experiments uh, because 
the whole structure has uh, a lot of holes in it. And uh, when you ask yourself uh, what kind of holes, uh, it's quite difficult to follow uh, the lines uh, because, yeah, you can say there's a rectangle hole here, but the, the real line of the hole uh, is going down here and then it goes on like this. Well, I can make it more visible when I cut away more pieces, you can see that the line of each hole is following a, a, a gentle curve. And zooming in on the curve, like this, you can see that the curve is in fact not that complicated, it's just a knot. You will see that we also here get a double layered uh, structure. Uh, because below there's the other tile, and you can see it when I open up the construction. So there are in fact two layers, a top layer and a bottom layer. But, uh, well, there's something curious about this. Uh, because I say there's a top layer and a bottom layer, but when I call this uh, layer one, you see that this is connected to the, the layer below, uh, I can walk from here to here, below. I can come back here, and I, I'm still on the same layer, so to say, but I'm also on a neighbor. The knot uh, uh, plays a very uh, important role in this kind of structures. Uh, the shape of the hole of the structures uh, is the knot, and uh, so uh, with the knot, we can make uh, connections, uh, just uh, what we did with the rings, to build up structures. So complete structures like this can make a connection uh, with more layers, so a second layer of knots, and we can add a third one, and we end up with uh, a situation similar with the ring structures in the beginning. Another thing you, you can do with uh, this situation, uh, just so the, the linked knots, is to see this uh, as edges for a surface. And then you will see that we get the same structure again uh, to make a surface. <laughs>